One of the most common service calls we get as an HVAC technician is when the customer says that the indoor air conditioning system is not blowing cold air. And so we're gonna segment this video off into two parts. One is where the outdoor unit is not running at all, and the other part where the outdoor unit is running, but it just doesn't seem to be transferring heat properly. So now we're gonna get into this video. There's a variety of reasons why this outdoor unit may not be turning on, and the first place we need to look at is at the outdoor electrical disconnect. And right now, this is in the off position where we need to have it in the on position. And so we need to also check for voltage in here to see if the indoor breaker is in the on position and so it could even be tripped. Now, presently we're reading 0.5 volts. And so these are the terminals that are going to the outdoor unit. So uh, that shouldn't have any voltage because we have our disconnect pulled out. And now we're reading 240 volts at the top terminals, which means that our breaker is in the on position and is not tripped. The other thing is we do need to check these fuses in here because this disconnect uh, does have fuses. And so, Let's check right here, and we should have very close to 0.0, .0 ohms of electrical resistance if this fuse is good. And you see we do, we have 0.2. If it read OL, then that means that the fuse is bad. And so right there you see 0.2. So those fuses are good. So if you have power here and you do have good fuses and this disconnect is in the on position, we need to move over to the electrical shroud of the outdoor unit. So here, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna loosen these two screws, the two top ones, and then we're gonna remove fully the bottom ones. Now the thing with this is you wanna make sure to hold the electrical shroud cover right here because you don't want it to fall down onto the refrigerant lines. And so we need to take a look over here. You could have no low voltage power to the contactor telling the unit to turn on, or maybe one of these components in this outdoor unit is bad. Now, as we're pointing at these wires and components, we do have our disconnect in the off position, uh, but we could have a bad capacitor out here. So we may have one uh, that is a mushroom top like this, which means that it is bad. It's no longer functioning. We could be leaking fluid from it like this. You could have one that has, say, a bad weld up at the top uh, that could be burnt apart. The other thing is you may have a burnt uh, connection like this that is just melted apart. Maybe the wire feeding the capacitor is not connected tightly and is bad. This helps the outdoor fan and the compressor to turn on and to run. And I have a whole nother video on testing the capacitors down in the description section below, but this capacitor right here may look fine and it may test bad. And so uh, that could be the issue. We could have a bad contactor right here. So we could have something like uh, burnt contacts right here, maybe due to high current or just that the contactor is bad. We could have something like this where we have a burnt coil like that. And you could have where the contacts maybe got water down in them and that has ruined the, the contactor and that would have to get replaced uh, with the correct VA. And so if you have a single pole contactor like this one right here, you'd replace it with a, the same VA 24 volt uh, contactor like this. And same with the capacitor. So if this is bad, you need to replace it with the same microfarad ratings for the compressor and for the fan motor. Now, if you have a bad capacitor and the rating plate is worn off, and also to double check, you can look at the outdoor unit fan motor's rating plate to find the correct MFD reading that you need. MFD means microfarads. And you can also take a phone and zoom in down to the compressor to be able to, to locate the rating that's needed on there as well for the compressor. So that would be the MFD or the microfarad. So it's a micro symbol followed by an F symbol. And it's also gonna show you the voltage rating that's needed. And so you can install a new capacitor that has the same voltage ratings or higher than the compressor or the fan motor, but you must install the exact MFD readings that the fan motor and the compressor are calling for. Now these two components may be good and you may just not have any power and we can check all of these items with a multimeter. But in this case, you see we have zero volts right here. And so even if this was pressed in, because we have the power off, it's not gonna turn on, but the 24 volt power is meant to be able to suck in uh, this contactor right here. And it's because of the electrical magnet at the bottom. When you power the coil of wire, it turns into an electrical magnet and sucks in this contact and allows your high voltage power to, to come through. 
turning on both your outdoor fan and your compressor. I just did this sample wiring to show you where the 24 volts at the outdoor unit contactor is actually coming from. It's coming from the Y and the C terminal at the indoor gas furnace circuit board. So on a call for air conditioning to turn on on your wall thermostat, you'd have your thermostat wire running all the way to your indoor gas furnace. And so basically the R and Y are gonna to touch in your thermostat. Then you're gonna have 24 volt power on your Y and that's going to run to the outdoor unit through this thermostat wire, power the contactor and the path back is this C terminal over here. And so that's where it's coming from. The 24 volt power is coming from the indoor unit. So when you disconnect power at the outdoor uh, high voltage disconnect, you're only turning off the high voltage power. You're still gonna have 24 volt power to the size of the contactor if you do have a call for air conditioning to turn on on your thermostat. You could have a pressure switch like this, which is uh, basically open in the open position and it's not allowing your 24 volt power to your contactor maybe because there's a refrigerant leak and so that could be the issue. So I have a whole nother video on the step-by-step -step diagnosis of the 24 volt power in each of these components down in the description section below. Now I want to point out that you can and should be diagnosing these uh, components with the high voltage electrical power off because you don't want to be near the high electrical current loads when they're turning on or while they're running uh, just due to safety. Now you may have a situation where the outdoor fan motor is running but the compressor is not running. So there is no refrigerant circulating through the system so there's no heat transfer. So a quick way to determine that is by feeling these lines right here. And so you could feel a vibration, you could feel a temperature difference and you could also listen for the compressor. Uh, so that's just quickly before you even pull off the shroud in order to see if that's working. Now you could have a, a bad capacitor where it's only bad on the herm side of the capacitor and the fan is still good. I've had that happen before. So, you know, that the fan motor is running and, and uh, the compressor is not. Now, just remember, even if the capacitor looks like it's good, looks like it's new, it could still be bad. On that, uh, on that one section of the capacitor. So make sure to check that out. You could have another issue like the uh, wires leading to the compressor. Maybe uh, they're burnt apart or open or maybe at the terminals of the compressor or maybe just the compressor is overheated and having a hard time starting up. You could have an issue like copper plating where you have acidity in the lines eating away at the copper molecules and placing them at the hottest part in the whole system, which is the compressor. And it has a hard time starting, you know, with moving those, um, the scroll plates, say in a, in a scroll compressor or a reciprocating compressor where it has the, the pistons moving. So that could be the issue. Uh, you could also have, say, a blown terminal. Uh, so you wouldn't have any pressure at the, at the ports right here. So as far as compressor diagnosis, I have a whole other video down in the description section below. If the indoor fan, the outdoor compressor, and the outdoor fan motor are all running, and basically the thermostat is set on air conditioning mode and the temperature is set low and it's not able to maintain that temperature or it continues to rise, there could be several issues at play. And so let's start with some of the simpler ones first. If you turn this air conditioning system on for the very first time, you're gonna have high heat and high humidity in the return. It's getting sucked through here and pushed across this EVAP coil. And so this low temperature coil is gonna have a hard time with that high humidity. So it's not gonna feel like cold air coming out of the supply registers. And so especially if you have a piston metering device at this indoor unit, it's gonna take a while to battle what's called the latent heat load. And that's the humidity, the water vapor condensing onto the coil and trickling out. And so it's gonna battle with that first. Uh, and it's also gonna be lowering the temperature a little bit in the building, but not as much if you have very, very high humidity. So that could be the issue. The other thing is you could have one singular window open in the building and that will be enough to not be able to drop the temperature in the building. And so because you have that heat and humidity coming in, uh, that would affect the whole system's operation. And so this is something that you ask about, ask your customer before you even arrive at the job site. Uh, because you don't want to have to find things like that. Um, I found uh, many windows that were open that were affecting the system. And so it's either a door's not shut correctly, a window's not fully shut, the windows aren't latched, uh, windows are open. And so it could be any one of those issues. 
the outdoor unit and the indoor unit may not be sized properly for the building. And if it's not, say if this is oversized, it's gonna turn on and turn off too quickly and not remove humidity from the building. If this is undersized or both of these units are undersized, it's just gonna to continue to run and run and run. And so that could be the issue. So we could look at the outdoor unit rating plate to see the size. You could have an undersized outdoor unit and you need to look at the outdoor unit rating plate. And so right here it says 24, and that means 24,000 BTUs of heat removal capacity that's two tons of air conditioning and so the outdoor unit may just continue and continue to run and not satisfy the thermostat and so the issue uh, really has to do with doing a heat load and loss calculation on the building to determine the size of both the outdoor unit and the indoor unit and so you could use uh, software like WriteSoft or something like that or the ACCA's Manual J. You may have an airflow issue where basically if the airflow is too low you may be limiting the capacity of the system to exchange heat at this coil. So for instance if this fan motor was set to too low of a fan speed uh, then you're, you're not bringing the adequate amount of air across the coil. So you're not able to condition the air properly. Uh, so you could, with the power off, uh, adjust the, the settings up in here in order to adjust the blower motor speed. And you could use the TEC True Flow Grid to measure your airflow. You're looking for 400 CFMs roughly per every 12,000 BTUs of capacity for air conditioning mode. And of course, uh, if you are in a very humid environment, you may wanna lower that down to say 375, 350 CFM. Anyway, you could also have a airflow restriction. And so the most common is a clogged filter. And so you could have something like this. Uh, you could have a pleated filter that's clogged. The other thing is some uh, homeowners are actually strangling their unit because they're deciding that that they want a very very high MERV rated filter but, but they're trying to put it in a one inch filter slot and that doesn't work because you don't have this surface area in order to have the airflow come across this without like an extreme pressure drop so if you want to have a uh, high filtration for like dust and pollen and pet dander and all that type of stuff you're going to need a four inch filter a four inch filter cabinet in order to accomplish that. Otherwise, you're gonna be slowing the airflow down way too much. And so you're restricting the airflow by, by doing that. You could also have a problem where the airflow is being restricted at the underside of the coil, maybe if this is clogged with dust. And so that could happen due to having no filter at all, or maybe a, a cheap filter like a fiberglass or a hog hair filter, or if the air is kind of traveling around the filter, so that would completely clog this coil. And this one's easy to inspect and others are not. So here's an example of a fully clogged coil. And so this would restrict the airflow crossing the coil and coming through the supply registers. And so another thing to look out for is dust on the outdoor coil. So you could have leaves blocking it or something like that. Or if you have a dryer vent that could be caking dust along the whole outside of the coil. So you wanna make sure to rinse that off. So you could also have undersized return ducts down there. You could have uh, undersized return grills. You could have uh, undersized supply registers uh, and supply ducts. So those could all be issues. You could have strangled flex ducts, uh, ones that are just pinched down. Uh, so those could all be, say, installation issues, but airflow is a whole nother thing. Now on rare occasions, you could also have the airflow set too high of a fan speed. And so if that's the case, the heat load crossing this indoor coil is gonna to be too high for the system, which means that the temperature of the refrigerant traveling through this coil is also gonna to be too high, and it's not going to uh, be able to reduce the humidity inside the building effectively. So what happens is, as the humid air is crossing this indoor coil, the temperature of the coil is so low that the water vapor reaches its dew point, and condenses on the coil and trickles down and trickles out of the system. And so if you have like too high of an airflow speed, uh, the temperature of this coil will be above the dew point and you're not reducing the humidity inside the building, which makes the homeowner uh, you know, feel sticky, uncomfortable because their body is not able to basically evaporate any moisture off their skin. So they don't feel comfortable due to the high humid uh, level inside the building. And even if the temperature is lower and the humidity is high, 
that building owner is gonna still feel uncomfortable. So we need to make sure that the airflow is set properly and obviously the doors need to be on and, and um, you need to have all of your ductwork sealed because you could have leaks in your ductwork and you could be exchanging the air with the outdoor air. You could be sucking in hot, humid air from the attic. And so those are all uh, potential issues that you could have. Now there could be another issue such as a low refrigerant charge or maybe a liquid line restriction. And with a low refrigerant charge or a liquid line restriction, you're not gonna have enough saturated refrigerant flowing through this indoor coil to absorb the heat from the air crossing over the coil. So it's gonna be a major problem for the system. And so you could also have other issues like a contaminated refrigerant charge. You could have overcharge system where it's not able to like reject heat from this outdoor unit into the outdoor air. There could be a lot of different reasons. And if you wanna learn more about the refrigerant related uh, possibilities, make sure to check out our new second edition refrigerant charging and service procedures for air conditioning book. So this is available over at Amazon and over at acservicetech.com. We have a bunch of other HVAC resources at acservicetech.com as well. So you can check those out. Hope you enjoyed yourself. We'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.